So there hasn't been a ton of news to cover or teams for me to break down lately. But one team that I've been paying attention to this whole season has been the Charlotte Hornets due to the fact that they drafted the rookie I've felt since the summer will bring home the Rookie of the Year award in 2021, LaMelo Ball. I've been thinking about making this video for a few days now and I started writing this script and gathering my stats yesterday, but after last night's win for the Hornets, I felt today would be a good time to break down and talk about this team, as well as talk about how and why they're one of the top offensive teams in the entire league, and also some of the flaws that the team has that are pretty much expected due to their age, but still need to be cleaned up. What's up guys, SCJ here, and if you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to give it a like as it helps out a lot, and if you're new to the channel and or enjoy the NBA, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. So last night, the Charlotte Hornets faced a Sacramento Kings team that was looking to get back on the right track after this Kings team beat the Pistons on Friday night and snapped their nine-game losing streak. While the Pistons are the second worst team in the league, the Kings could have just used any win to get back on the right track. Well, early on it looked like their struggles during this past 10 game streak for them were simply mental as they came out of the gates and dominated early as they held a 24 to 10 lead a little over just 5 minutes into the game. Well, even though it took them less than 6 minutes or half of the quarter to build that big lead, it also took them around 6 minutes to almost completely blow it as the Hornets stormed back to end the first quarter and cut the lead to just 3. The game was back and forth during the first 24 minutes, but then in the second half, the Kings took control of the game, or should I say they took control until the final minute. The Kings held an 8 point lead with just 1 minute left to play, and an 8 point lead until the 53 second remaining mark, but then not only did Terry Rozier, Malik Monk, and PJ Washington get hot for the Hornets, but the Kings also completely choked, missing five of their six free throw attempts, and the Charlotte Hornets got an impressive comeback victory over the Kings following a three-point play by Malik Monk, which is 1.4 seconds remaining in regulation. Even though they beat a Kings team that has now lost 10 of their last 11 games, this is still a great win for the Hornets, and right now, we're going to break down why. Well, the first reason being is the Hornets are really starting to come into their own, and this win only helps them as wins like this can really be a big mental boost for young teams like this year's Hornets team. It was also a huge win for them as they were without three of their key players and starters as Devontae Graham, Cody Zeller, and Gordon Hayward all missed last night's game as they're all currently dealing with injuries. This team is now in playoff positioning after last night's win as they are now holding on to the Eastern Conference's 8th seed and a big reason for that has been the play of the 2023rd overall draft pick, LaMelo Ball. This season, Ball is averaging 15.3 points, 6 rebounds, and 6.3 assists as well as 1.5 steals per game as well. Surprisingly enough though, despite being the third overall draft pick and the hype that surrounded him even before he entered high school, LaMelo Ball didn't start in the Hornets' first 20 games, which caused his father LeVar to come out and criticize Hornets head coach James Borrego. Not too long after that though, LaMelo and LeVar got their wish as LaMelo has been their starting point guard for the team in their previous 13 games. Aside from his scoring where he's seeing a near 8 point increase, LaMelo's numbers are pretty much the same or close to the same ever since he's began to become a starter. However, over the last 13 games, this Hornets team is now 7-6 over that stretch and while that's not a great record or anything to really look at, him starting for the Hornets has seemed to help this team get an offensive boost as they have been a top 10 team in the league offensively in a number of different categories. Much like LaMelo's personal points per game average seeing a near 8 point jump, the team is averaging 8.9 more points per game ever since LaMelo has begun to start games for the team. They've also seen a slight jump to the team's field goal percentage from 45.1% to 47.7%. Same goes for their three-point shooting as they've seen a nice 3.9% jump over this stretch and over the past 13 games, they have the fourth best three-point shooting percentage in the entire league. Another shooting area we'll look at and the only other shooting area we could look at is free throw percentage and is in another place where they have taken a big leap as they have seen an improvement of 10.3% to their shooting on attempts from the free throw line. I guess the Lamello effect is a real thing after all. So I guess that shows you, ever since LaMelo has begun to start games for this Hornets team, they've looked very good offensively. Like mentioned before, even though he's putting up solid numbers for the entire season, he's already put himself in very good company currently with how well he's played on offense. 
This season, there's currently five players averaging at least 14 points, six rebounds, and six assists on 35% shooting from three-point range, and LaMelo is one of those players, and he's the only rookie out of that bunch. The other four players are James Harden, Nikola Jokic, Luka Doncic, and LeBron James. That's very good company to be in, to say the least. However, he's not the only player on the Hornets who has looked good offensively this season. Charlotte currently has seven players averaging double-digit points per game totals on the year and eight players averaging double-digit totals over the past 13 games. There's two other Hornets players specifically, not named Lamella, that are putting up some very impressive numbers on the season. Prior to last night's game, there were only three players averaging 20-plus points and three or more threes a game on a 60% or higher efficiency field goal percentage this season. Two of those guys are all-stars, and they are Paul George and Zach Levine. That third guy was Terry Rozier, as you can see here, and he's put up some very nice numbers this season and been efficient in doing so. His efficiency field goal percentage dropped below 60% last night, down to 59.7%, but expect him to hop back over 60% shooting-wise soon with how well he's played, and that stat could be accurate once again, depending on how well they play on the second half of a back-to-back -back tonight against a tough Trailblazers team. The other guy over this recent stretch who's been putting up impressive numbers for Charlotte has been Malik Monk. Prior to last night's game, Monk was averaging the fifth highest three-point percentage in the entire league for the 2020-21 NBA season. But after going 0-7 for 7 from beyond the arc in last night's game, his percentage has dropped down to 44%, which of course still isn't bad, but that over 2% drop has put him down in 16th place in the league in terms of the rankings for the best three-point percentage. But with the fact that he went 9 for 13 from three-point range in LaMelo's first career start against the Heat last month, and he had shot 47% in their five games prior to last night's win against the Kings, I won't be surprised if he enters the top 10 of those rankings very soon. Another player it's important for me to mention is Hornets second-year player P.J. Washington, as he shot the ball very well ever since Ball has taken over as the starting point guard, and last night he had a huge game as he led the game in points, tied for leading in steals, and was one rebound shy of tying the lead for the most rebounds of any player in the game last night also. Washington had 42 points and 9 rebounds, as well as the fact that he shot very well on the night as he shot 15 for 23 from the field and 5 for 8 from downtown. That performance made the 22-year-old the youngest player in Hornets franchise history with 40 or more points in a game. So not only was that comeback victory big for this current Hornets team, it was also a game that will go down in franchise history as well. So the Hornets have been very good offensively, and you could see that from the stats we've looked at, and they've of course been playing even better lately, but what about their flaws? Well, one of the first things, yet an expected thing, from a young team with a rookie point guard is they are the fifth worst team in terms of turnovers on the season, and they have averaged the second most turnovers per game ever since LaMelo has begun starting for the team, and prior to last night's game, they were the worst team in that category, so despite turning the ball over 16 times last night, that boosted them up to the second worst position rather than the overall worst. The other area in which they've struggled has been their defense as they have given up the 8th most points per game overall on the season and the 5th most points per game over their previous 13 games. The one thing I will say though is that the, over the past 13 games they have had to play 3 total games against 2 of the best offensive teams in the league, the 76ers and the Utah Jazz. Of course though, that's still no excuse for how poor they have defended. One positive stat for the Hornets, I will say though, is the fact that they have had to play some tough teams this season, and prior to last night's win over the Kings, they had the 12th hardest strength of schedule. But after pushing the Kings to 8 games below 500, they now have the 17th hardest strength of schedule, but they do have the 5th most wins out of any team in the East in terms of wins against teams with a record above 500, and before last night's game, they had the 4th most. So this Hornets team does have themselves some flaws, and I'm not sure how much they can improve on them before playoff time comes around, but they've gotten themselves some impressive wins against teams like the Bucks and Suns, and for a young team with not too high of expectations, aside from the high expectations surrounding LaMelo Ball, this team really has played better than expected, at least to me that is. Another important thing to mention and give them credit for is that last night they only went with a rotation of 9 players yet got 43 points off their bench as nearly 3 of those 4 guys scored in double digits and Malik Monk gave them 21 points off the bench even with his poor 0 for 7 shooting from behind the arc. So with the fact that teams rotations shrink come playoff time I think that's very important and a big deal for this Hornets team. 
especially when they were without three of their key players last night and starters, and they still got that impressive comeback victory. The Hornets have a tough game on their hands in the second game of a back-to-back -back tonight, like mentioned before, so it'll be interesting to see how they play against a true playoff team like Portland, and I think since it's coming on the second half of a back-to-back, -back, they will most likely lose that game and come back down to earth a bit, but this Hornets team is a young, tough team that shouldn't be slept on whatsoever, so I can't count them out tonight completely. This team of course has their flaws like mentioned in this video and shown off in this video, but it's important for teams not to overlook them when they see them on their schedule as they've beaten some tough teams like most recently the hot Phoenix Suns and they have a number of players who can get hot and take over a game on any given night. And while this year might not be the year for them to make a deep, deep playoff run, I wouldn't be surprised if they knock off a couple impressive wins come playoff time, especially if they can prove a bit on their flaws. I want to know though what you guys think about this Hornets team, their win last night, any of their performances lately, or anything having to do with the team down below in the comments section. Like I mentioned before though, if you like this video then make sure to give it a like as it helps out a lot, and if you're new to the channel and or enjoy the NBA, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell, that way you stay up to date with my newest content. Anyway though guys, I'm SCJ and I am out. Peace.